Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard. Today we're gonna play with the sawmill, but you probably already knew that because you, uh, you clicked on the video. <laughs> so let me show you what we're gonna cut. So I have quite the pile of logs right now that I have to kind of get through, but I thought today we'll uh, go back in here and take care of this guy, which is laying here in the shade. So this is a leftover log from my workbench kits last year. Uh, after getting it back here and looking a little closer, I figured it's not really the best fit for my workbenches because it is kind of small in diameter for that purpose. And it's got a lot of crotches. So looking at it from down here, you can kind of see how the tree grew kind of spirally or whatever. So it's not that great for a quarter saw and workbench top, but it looks like it's gonna be really great for slabs. It should have a lot of uh, character in it. Kind of looking through here, you know, we've got a little bit of uh, burl action here and looking up in here the light catches just right there is some curl that's showing itself on the exterior here in the in the uh, exterior of the tree so we got curl in a few spots and looking in here we can see some more curl and stuff as well now one thing that i'm excited about for slabs for this is the fact that it's been sitting out here for about a year now that should give it uh, plenty of time to start staining and discoloring which for maple isn't ideal like commercially but for slabs and fun stuff like that, where you want some more color, some more visual interest, that staining is gonna be absolutely amazing. So I expect this to have more reds, yellows, and blues than just being stark, boring white. You can also see we have this uh, split here. So we have that. So it's definitely not a uh, high grade saw log, but it's perfect for slabs. Now one question I got when I showed this log in the workbench kit video was how it was felled because these felling cuts look kind of weird. So this was actually cut down by a hot saw feller buncher. So that machine has a large saw blade on the end of it. I think it's uh, like a two or a three inch kerf that it takes out. Now on a normal sized tree they could do that in one little fell swoop. But since this one is so big, you, see, you can see that they have to come in a few different times to get all the way through it. And uh, <laughs> it's, it kind of makes a mess of the, uh, of the end of the tree. This one that you can see they went up into it. <laughs> but uh, that's the log. We'll get over onto the saw and see, uh, see what we got, I guess. Get a better look at it, if anything. So two bits of observations here. First off, this log looks a lot bigger now it's on the saw. It looked kind of small out in the field. And uh, going along with that, second observation, it's also quite a bit longer <laughs> than, uh, than I thought it was. This has got to be more like 12, maybe 13 feet or something like that. So I'm just going to clean up this end here, get rid of all of this uh, felling junk and that'll buy me the extra length that I need to scoot this thing all the way back. So I'm gonna go get a chainsaw. <laughs> and uh, yeah, other than that, I like this orientation. We got two main crotch stems kind of in plane. Maybe I can rotate this one up a little bit more, but at least the cut line is gonna be somewhere in this range versus something like that. We're gonna basically ignore this limb up here and focus on the two main stems, two big crotches. That's gonna also put this split here into our slabs, which I think is gonna look amazing. I am, uh, I'm getting excited about this. This is <laughs> significantly bigger than I thought. Still too small for workbenches, but still bigger than I thought.
Okay, I think the length is gonna work out okay right here. I think though I'm gonna need to make a few, maybe a few small adjustments. But that end has to come up a bit. And actually this is pretty good right here. There's the pith on this center, and then the pith on this one's over here. So from here to here, that's kind of even, so our crotches are uh, in line. So I think I'm pretty good. I'm just gonna see if I can get that end up a little bit, even out the log a little bit, and that should be about it. And time for sawing. Okay, I'm just gonna bring the saw in here and remove this uh, chunk of material up here, and then we should be able to start making our actual cuts. So just as I was trying to figure out what height I wanted to cut this at, I saw this little gem here sticking out of the, uh, the top, or I guess this would have been the bottom before. So that's a, uh, a link from a piece of chain. So there's probably something else deeper inside of there. Now for me personally, I really like these metal inclusions. It really gives a sense of the tree's history and what uh, someone at some point did to it. And if this was, kind of further down in the log, I'd be very much inclined to leave this in place and just saw right through it and leave that inclusion in the wood because I think that's just an awesome way to preserve the history of the tree. But since this is so close to the end where, I mean, to be honest, where this thing is actually at and for a ways down in here, this would be trimmed off anyway when this is, you know, used. So I can't really justify it to myself cutting through that because it would just be cut off later anyway, or not really work in the slab. Like if we came straight through here, we'd have this little piece stick out the bottom of the slab, which wouldn't, wouldn't really do a whole heck of a lot for the slab as a product. Uh, so since this end is so chopped up already, I know I trimmed, I was trying to be conservative back here and leave more material where the slabs would get longer. Uh, I'm gonna probably cut this back further and uh, maybe we'll take it apart and see what exactly is in there. So that's all to say, <laughs> I'm gonna make my first like surfacing cut and maybe a second one. I think I can get one slab in there and then we'll deal with what's going on here. So song time. So just walking around this side, admiring how much you can see the figure that's in here. And as my eyes are looking, we got uh, another little 
grab point there, and another one here. <laughs> so, because those are nails and they're pretty easy to pull out, I'm, I'm just gonna pull them out. But if there's a good chance there's some more good stuff in there, like maybe this little hole used to be a, a nail or something, who knows? So, <laughs> uh, there's probably some good stuff in there that uh, we'll be exposing as we get down into this tree. Looks like there should be some figure in this, so let's take a quick look and see. Oh yeah, this is nice. This has got some curl and it's definitely stained, so it's got a lot more color, which I'm liking. So up in here we have this bark inclusion, but as we get down here, we start getting into some more interesting stuff. This is all kind of figured and a little bit curly through here. But we got this uh, bark inclusion here, which has a whole heck of a lot of curl coming out of it. So yeah, you can see the little undulations in the edge there. So we got we got some fun wavy grain here, and some really really odd looking stuff. So I'm gonna let's see. We got enough room to get one slab out of here. So I'm gonna cut a slab quick, and then we'll deal with all this embedded metal. All right, let's uh, let's deal with this stuff now. So I'm gonna pull these nails out since I can get to them. If I can even get <laughs> under them with this. Yep. Go. That's a big one. Add these to my collection. <laughs> now for this chain, since it's kind of angling down in this way and maybe a little bit that way, I think I'm gonna come in here with the chainsaw and it's coming right here, make a cut down a little ways, and then uh, try and split the end out. And we'll see if we can get this chunk out of here.
I guess that's it. It's in there somewhere. Just because I'm more curious than anything. <laughs> Let's see if we can uh, get this out of here a little bit. Stuff isn't really splitting very easily. <laughs> That didn't go in very far then. I still haven't found it. There it is. It looks like it was uh, maybe just nailed up here or nailed to the tree. It doesn't really go in that far. Yeah, you know, so maybe like a mounting plate or something up there. I don't know, I might just leave it like this. It's kind of cool. Well, that was an enjoyable distraction. Let's, uh, let's get back to doing some sawing. This, oh, this is gonna be a gorgeous log. Oh, that's awesome. So we did already see the other side of this one. I guess it was the, uh, the underside of this. It used to be the top, but just for, oh! That's the one thing I love about silver maple. You let it sit for a while and you get all this vivid color and grain. So this one's got that bark inclusion, obviously, but you can see all of the color that's coming in here 
less of this white and more yellows and blues and reds and stuff makes it you know, a lot more interesting to look at. <laughs> yeah. We got some figure in here. Oh, this is great. So we got some fun figurey things around whatever heck that is right there. And just some really cool color and grain and this bark inclusion. Got some spalting down here. Beautiful. So yeah, we did clip a nail here. You see, didn't do anything at all to the blade. <laughs> all right, let's uh, let's get this next one down here. Oh. This this log is bigger than I thought it was. <laughs> it it looks a lot bigger as slabs. It's massive. <laughs> oh, it's big. Zippity doo dah. I don't know why I said that. That's like a burl or something down here. And some curl and some kind of burly pocket eye things. This is getting promising. So there is that kind of burl, curl, curly burly, bark inclusion-y thing right there. And we have some more sort of burly, crotchy, not crotchy, curly, curly burly, quilty kind of figured area there. And we got this nice, uh, split up here. It's a bark inclusion or an old bark inclusion. Up to this little crotch area. All the crotch figure is consumed by this uh, rot pocket area there. But uh, there's some nice color and spalts and stuff in this guy. This is it's getting better. This is only slab number three. So we got some uh, insect damage down here. We got that bark inclusion coming across here. A lot of nice colors, basically clear all through here. We got some fun knot with some stuff around it going on down there. And this, there is that kind of burl kind of thing there. And another one. <laughs> that is uh, significantly heavier than the last one. Oh! <laughs> that is big! That's a lot bigger than I thought. Holy crap. 40. <laughs> Uh, 36. Fifty two. <laughs> I thought it was a lot smaller than that. So this is definitely going to be a significant bark inclusion in here. It's, uh, Definitely going to be prominent, I think, through most of the log, but I am really liking that. I like this negative void space here in the middle, and it's, man, it's super clear through the middle here. And we got our fun burl pocket things going on down there. Some weird stuff with the staining right there, but I do like it's so much better when it's red and orange and yellow than when it's just pure white. I like stained maple. <laughs> Natural stain. <laughs> Gorgeous stuff. All right, I'm going to throw this one on the stack and then we got some more song to do. Quite a bit more song to do.
<laughs> yeah, I say we cut through something all right. So if uh, that didn't get you to like carbide blades as much as I do now, I think uh, maybe you like them more now. Just keep going. <laughs> I am far less worried about embedded metal objects now after cutting through a two inch square tube with a quarter inch wall thickness. <laughs> if I can cut through that and finish the cut and now finish cutting this log and this blade is still good, there's not a whole lot that's going to be inside these logs that's going to stop me now. Oh man, I like this saw. It's nice. I love how the water brings out this that beautiful color and figure and grain in the wood. This maple is absolutely gorgeous with all its reds and yellows and all kinds of weird stuff. Pretty big too. I, I keep saying it, but the colors on here, so much better than just boring white. <laughs> we got a little bit of uh, rot stuff going on down here with some uh, insect tracks. And we got some spalting over there. As we get down to this side, we have this cool feature where we got this little piece here that kind of split out. That was from the original tree, so that kind of fits back <laughs> down in there. That is, uh, that's a nice piece of wood. So with this split here, coming all the way down through here, and we got some structural defects coming up here, the only thing holding this slab together, the two halves of the slab together, just this little bit of material down here so I'm using some boards to help support the two halves as I roll them over to keep from uh, damaging these things or having them come apart. That's a little much. I mean, I met my match. Slab number seven. So we do have that sort of structural issue down here where this is all separating out of here. So we got this bit of shake, which is continuing through here. But I think it's a really fun and interesting detail. We've got another structural defect here that runs pretty well up through there. These are my forks. <laughs> I left the slab on the forks overnight. So we're going to have a little bit of staining there, or at least surface level staining. Shouldn't go too deep. But here's how big that void and defect is. You can see this basically, this is just junk. They kind of fill in there. That's like roots from like a tree that was growing on top of this crotch. So this is all negative space. Nothing is here holding it together all the way down through into here. So these are two halves that could come apart at any point. But I absolutely love like the, the split through the middle. I, I think it's so cool. And this is all 
this is cool. All kinds of weird stuff is growing up in here. So I think that adds to a really cool effect. We got some cool figure up in here. I don't know, I think it's just a really fun piece of wood, just generally. So some measurements here, kind of through here at this point. That's 50, 50 and a half inches through there. Definitely bigger than I thought. This is way bigger than it was sitting out in the field. That's about 40. And this kind of narrow spot here is uh, 38. So that's like a whole, that's a table size slab. What do we got for the length? We got 11 feet, kind of from there. If we go from where that corner is clipped, we're at 10 by the time we trim this end. So that's a full, that's a full on table right there. All right, let's take a look at number eight here. Oh, this is getting good now because we're getting some wood coming back here in the middle. Oh, that's cool. So we are starting to see some material coming back in here, which is kind of a cool look. It fills that void space up a little bit with uh, some cool looking wood. Yeah, this is this tree is not going to have any crotch figure from these two limbs. It's just going to be all of this uh, bark inclusion thing here. Man, this thing's got some serious character. Getting down to the last of this thing down here. Which has got some cool stuff going on around it. You can see we had this ring shake out here, which travels up the log. So you can see how the, the splitting of the growth rings as perceived on the end kind of translates into the surface where the tree is actually splitting along that growth ring. So it'll be kind of a circular kind of split as it comes through, following the growth rings. Really great color. And this, <laughs> with all the stuff growing in here, all the roots and little bits of other things growing, I like this a lot. This is, this is probably some of the coolest thing you can do. Like you, can, you could do this with like, if you took a bunch of branches and cut them up and put them in an epoxy fill in here, but it would be very difficult to get this level of kind of randomness because we're intersecting all these uh, tubes at different angles. So you're getting, instead of circles, you know, that's kind of a circle, you're getting ovals because we're at a, uh, a biased cross section. Like even this one, like that's <laughs> a super biased cross section. I love that. And I totally forgot to point out, this is where that side stop was so you can see some of the little bits of iron in here and uh, here's a little tiny piece a little shaving off of that side stop piece of steel <laughs> what's very interesting is the the surface quality the surface finish doesn't look any different from before to after it's a little different going through here as it was chomping through that steel but once it exited surface finish stayed exactly the same as before those blades <laughs> yeah i'm not i'm not pulling anything out of trees anymore That is nice. <laughs> so we're starting to get this uh, fill piece getting a little bit bigger here. So remember this log had that limb sticking way up in the air that I clipped in the beginning. That's this right here as it's starting to come up to where it was when we saw it earlier. So that's cool. <laughs> we got some really cool like bridging action going on here. So this area here is still Pretty darn awesome. Got a little fun little bark inclusion right there. And then all of the, you can see this one's got a lot of structural defects. Doot, doot. That crack there, this crack here, and that ring shake there. So I think this one illustrates pretty well, like a ring shake, you can see is actually separating along the growth rings. 
there's the growth rings going all the way up, whereas a crack like this crosses the growth rings. You can see the growth rings here. This one goes right across it. This one's following this ring all the way up to here. And down here we got some spalting as well. So colorful, spalting, defects, all kinds of all kinds of fun, good stuff. So I think we have what three or four more slabs left in the in the, uh, the log there on the saw. So uh, back to sawing for a bit, and we will look at slab 10, 11, and I guess 12, maybe maybe 13. I don't know how big this thing is. We'll see. That's cool. This is, uh, that's some cool stuff right there. <laughs> There's a lot going on there. And that's a cool one. Oh, I like that a lot. All right, let's take a look at this guy. I absolutely love this, whatever we're gonna call this, the crap bowl. There's so many things just like buried in here, all these roots and bits of like other stuff that was growing up in here. It's like a peat bog. <laughs> in between here, you get a little bit of figure here from like a crotch area. So this is like the most crotch figure I've seen so far, which is not very much. And here comes that limb. Coming up this way, bark inclusion. You can see this is the remainder of that kind of bark inclusion split. It comes all the way out to the edge now, and this is separated from up there. And I'm guessing that there's not much holding this whole section here on. But down here is clear. We got some fun colors up in there, we got some pinks in there. Mostly all clear though, not a whole lot going on, just colorful. And then up here you can see the white. This is what the whole tree would have been like if we had cut this, I don't know, maybe last year sometime. Oh, I didn't see this, look. Check out all this figure right here. We got a nice patch of curl here in, back in number 10. Let's see what 11's got for us. <laughs> oh, this one's gorgeous. There is a lot going on in this one. So I'm gonna start up here because it's like the craziest. There's not a whole lot. We've, we've kind of gotten through all of the fun cross-sectional stuff up in here. So there's not a whole lot of stuff left like up in here. On this one, we had a lot more of these cross sections. We're kind of getting through all of that. We have a few uh, longer ones down here at a pretty steep bias angle. So we got larger cross sections of stuff down here, but we're getting some figure coming around here. We got some spalting. We got a little bit of figure over here. And then as you come down the tree, clear, colorful. This piece is probably gonna split off. So that's probably gonna continue through. And you got some spalting and color down here too. So this is, there's a lot going on in these slabs, a lot. 
So that is number 11. We just have that thick one up on the saw now, and then that'll be it for this log. All right, let's take a look at this guy. Uh, I don't think there's gonna be a whole lot going on here. But what do I know? <laughs> so down here, we're starting to see more of that limb as it uh, came up through here and got a little bigger. We're almost all the way through all this inclusion stuff here and down through here. We got some spalting and some colorfulness, but otherwise pretty clear, simple, nice, traditional-ish wood. Got some kind of fun little dots, little burly dots. But otherwise, that's about it for uh, this guy. So now with the cap piece on there, remember this guy, this is where that limb was, boop, coming up through here. So this limb right here is what we've been kind of tracing as this thing kind of grows down in that way and comes up to here. So we've been kind of following this one up to the last few slabs, kind of forms down in here and cuts through all of these and exits up here. So we've been following that this whole time. So just kind of, it's just always cool to see like how the tree grew and how it kind of came up from the center out to the outsides, however that might be. So that is, we got the 12 slabs out of here, 11 pieces at 10 quarter or heavy 10 quarter. And then one piece here at, uh, well, I think it's like 15 quarter is what it ended up being. I'm really glad that I didn't cut this and try, or at least try and cut it into workbench kits. I probably could have gotten one or two out of there, but they would have been in the middle of some of the structural defects. So they would have been uh, not to grade anyway. So this, this actually worked out. I'm really glad I was, I was going back and forth and whether or not to even like just attempt this, just attempt to cut it into workbench kits and see what happens. But I'm really glad I didn't and went this way with it and made some slabs out of it because these these are some pretty awesome slabs and I think it's definitely a better use of the log to have it as slabs versus trying to make workbench kits that would be useless pretty much so that's a that's a good one and of course we had a little bit of metal in there and uh, a little bit of metal that's that wasn't in there that we still went through no problem at all so we're just gonna we're gonna kind of saw through everything for now on <laughs> so that is gonna do it for this one thank you as always for watching i greatly appreciate it. If any questions or comments on the sawmill or slabbing anything back in the shop or whatever please feel free to leave me a comment as always i'll be happy to answer any questions you might have and until next time <laughs> happy woodworking